How's everybody feeling tonight? You guys good? Yeah. I just got this fresh haircut. And I feel like I accidentally asked the barber for the Book of Mormon. When they were done, I looked in the mirror involuntarily and said, have you heard the good word? I also feel like I look very German with this haircut. Like, I don't think anybody would have been surprised had I come to the stage and been like, how's everybody doing tonight? You guys go to what? Everybody go to here. It's great to be here. Keep not smiling, all right? What's the gayest thing you've ever done? Pray do tell. <laughs> As he sips a drink. Well, girls, let me begin. <laughs> I think we all do. Do you have a specific story? That's pretty gay. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, you're the seedling of a gay dude. How now did, did he come out later in life or was it always like, or do you have uh, gay parents? Uh, it, was, it was later, later on. Okay. Yeah. So like your dad came out like, like after you were like a teenager or something? 2020. 2020. Everybody's pandemic was different. <laughs> We all went through different things. I was one of those guys uh, who had to fake being upset about all the gyms shutting down during the pandemic. I was like, where are we gonna work out? This was gonna be our year, right? I was gonna get swollen this year. Like, I had signed up for a gym and everything, right? They weighed me at this gym. They took my body fat percentage. They said, hey, Jeremiah, you're good on your body fat percentage. I was like, ha yeah. <laughs> then they go, but you need to gain three pounds of skeletal mass. And I was like, you want me to gain bone? What exercise is that? <laughs> this professional trainer looked at me and goes, we don't know. <laughs> you have hollow bones like a bird. <laughs> also, you look like a giant bird. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, this gym sucks. I pecked that dude in the face, I flew out of there. <laughs> See all different kinds of characters at the gym, right? You ever see those dudes who work out disproportionately? <laughs> They're ripped up top, but then it gets down to the bottom half, it just looks like deer legs. <laughs> you wanna go? You wanna take this outside? I'm pretty nimble on my feet. Let's go right here, right now, bro. Let's do this. But all you have to do if you get in a fight with one of those guys is sweep the leg and then they come down like a sack of potatoes where, oh no, I can't get up, I'm too top heavy, I'm a turtle, oh. <laughs> like the top half is always super threatening, but the bottom half is just screaming, ladies, <laughs> mimosas, let's have a night out in the town, I just nerd. Cosmos on me, sex in the city marathon, let's do it tonight. I want to be the one guy that only works out the bottom half of his body. <laughs> Just looks like a total crab. <laughs> Thinks chicks are into that. 
hey, where are we going? Uh, you want to get out of here? You want to go somewhere? Ksh, just kill the guy. Ksh, just kill the guy. Ksh, just kill the guy. How did that guy die? He died between the legs of another man. I tried to buy my uh, wife a t-shirt recently. Big spender up here. So what size are you? She goes, I'm a small, but since I have boobs, I'm a medium. And I'm like, that's not how sizes work. <laughs> yeah, my penis is 18 inches if you measure from a butthole. <laughs> I'm nine feet tall on stilts. I weigh 100 pounds with none of my vital organs. What are we doing here? You guys seem like a cool crowd. So I feel like I can share some intimate secrets with you guys. I have a handicap during sex. I have a handicap during sex. I can't 69 because my nose is too big. Ends up in the butthole every single time. <laughs> Am I doing this right? <laughs> I'm super musty back here. Reminds me of Grandpa's attic. <laughs> I'm in the mood to do an impression for you guys. This is my impression of the band Kings of Leon. If they were lost in the woods. Kings of Leon, if they were lost in the woods. I've been roaming around, always looking at all I see. Trees. I wish that I could find somebody. I wish that I could find somebody. Again, he's like, what is happening right now? <laughs> I just became a dad. And then I'll tell you that when you bring your child home from the hospital, that there is a new king of the household. <laughs> When my wife and I brought this baby into our lives, we instantly became peasants. <laughs> what can I get you? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Anything. Anything at all. May I wipe your butt? <laughs> oh, please let me do it to be my deepest honor. <laughs> <laughs> Are you tired? Take my sleep. I want you to have it. Please take all my energy, every ounce and fiber of my being, everything I used to be and am now. It's yours, it's all yours. Are you hungry, sire? Take my wife's tea. You deserve it more than I. <laughs> Please take my wife's tea. I have no more use for them. If I may assist, I will dip it in your mouth like an au jus. 
Do you like French dips, my lord? <laughs> Otherwise, I can stand in the corner and awkwardly do nothing as I stare. <laughs> the doctor said that for a newborn, we need to keep the temperature in his room between 68 degrees and 72 degrees. Otherwise, he might die. <laughs> what kind of stuck up royal king behavior is that? If you do not meet my demands, I might suddenly pass away. Would you like that on your conscience until the end of time? Here, take this air conditioning bill and leave me. So it's hot in every room in our place, except the king's room. Sometimes I'll crack the door open and slip my nose in just to remember what cool air feels like. It's like heaven on earth in there. A white noise machine is gently cooing him to sleep. The best of Enya is always on loop. <laughs> Meanwhile, in my room, it's hot. It's aggressive. Public Enemy is playing for some reason. <laughs> it's like a war scene in there. There's spit up everywhere. We bring our son in for just a second. He starts crying immediately. Oh, why is it so hot in here? Is this how the commoners live? Take me back to my frozen chambers immediately. Oh, yes, my lord, yes, my lord. My son is 16 months old and already has zero respect for me. <laughs> my wife is sweet, she's trying to teach him sign language so he can let us know when he wants more. More. But he looks me in the eyes and he can already tell I'm a beta and he's an alpha. <laughs> He clenches his fists, he just starts to bash it on the table. He's like, no, this means more. Now go get me more milk now, teeth preferably wench. I was bathing the king the other night. Had a little tub in the sink, he was really enjoying himself. He's so fat, he has skin creases that are still sticking together even when he's reclined. Me as the lowly peasant had to get all the gross stuff out of the folds. And he's like, oh, yes, right there, Father Deeper. Yes, right there. I start to drain the water out of the tub, and he shoots me this look like, I'm not done yet, peasant. And as soon as the water subsides below his hip level, he gives me a very purposeful look, and he arcs a perfect pee <laughs> over the sink, directly on my crotch. And he locked eyes with me, he's like, you're not going anywhere. I'm like, I just took it like the bait I am. My wife is loving this, by the way, and so is the glutton king. His fat rolls are bouncing up and down so hard because he's laughing now. Ah, this is what a real man looks like, father. Ah. That's the king I serve. He recently started calling me dada, which is a pretty cool feeling as a parent, you know? I was glad he went with dada over daddy. Because daddy has been ruined for me <laughs> by the adult entertainment industry. <laughs> when I hear daddy now, all I see is a hot girl going like, oh yeah, daddy. Oh yeah, daddy. Like I'm gonna see my son crawling, he's gonna pick me up, daddy. Feed me, Daddy, right here. Son, we don't talk like that at this household. But Daddy, not at the dinner table. <laughs> that dude's laughing extra. I already watches a lot of porn back there. <laughs> My joke came to, to life the other weekend. I was on the road, I was staying in a hotel, and a couple in the room next to me, I could hear through the wall. And all I could hear was this girl going, Oh, yeah. Oh, daddy. Oh, right there, and give it to me, daddy. And I'm like, can you guys keep it down over there? I'm trying to sleep.
Quick poll for the fellas. Quick poll for the fellas. When was the last time you bought a towel? You hear that sound, ladies? That's the sound of every man's brain folding inside his body. When was the last time I bought a towel? Men don't buy towels. We inherit towels. Before we're kicked out of the nest by our family, our parents give us two towels for life. A bath towel and a beach towel. Like, what's that long one for? I like, trust us, you'll need it someday. There's only so many times we can cover you ladies up with a crunchy towel. Before you get offended, like, ow, did that just scratch me? This is disgusting. How come when I put your towel over there, it just stays? It looks like a sculpture. What is going on? Is there a ghost levitating underneath it? it looks like a cardboard cutout waving at me. Is that an oil stain on your towel? What are you using these towels for? Everything, I have two towels. Well, you ladies have it figured out, right? You've got a bunch of different kinds of towels in your bathroom, right? You got the body towel, you got the hand towel, you got washcloths. Sometimes you even have decorative towels. They're not even for touching, they're just for looking. That's how many towels ladies have. Ladies, you don't even know how many towels we have until you close the door of our bathroom. Then there's just one rogue towel. Hanging on the door, looking at you. And it's always slightly damp. It's never bone dry to the touch. And you ladies have to make a decision after you wash your hands. If that transaction is gonna make your hands cleaner or dirtier, and that's when you start air drying those things and walking away. Some women are like, nope, nope, I'm not doing that, nope. Like you could ask any guy in here how much a towel costs and we'd be like, I don't know, like $700? They're expensive, right? That's why we only have a couple. Oh, great snort. <laughs> I like snorts. Snorts are like the queefs of laughs. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I swear it doesn't happen all the time. A lot of queefers in the crowd. I don't, I don't know. That joke usually doesn't do that well, but... Madison, you're like, yeah, dude. I grew up in Kansas. Uh, I grew up very religious. I've actually never had a drink of alcohol. I've never done a drug in my life. And the only woman that I've ever slept with is my wife. <laughs> Two truths and a lie. <laughs> Cause your boy be getting it in. <laughs> No, no, all that's true, actually. Uh, very, uh, <laughs> you hear that? Oh. Now that's the nice boy I want to know. That's nice. Uh, ladies are always supportive, you know, uh, but there's always a hint of a condescending tone. <laughs> they treat me like a special education kid that won an award that nobody was competing for. Wow, that is good for you. Your mom must be proud. Gold star. Guys are always upset with me. It's like I failed them. They're like, dude, how could you do this to me? Like, you're weird looking, but you could have got three, dude. You sold yourself short, man. My wife loves it, though. She loves it. She got this. Fresh out the packaging. <laughs> There's no miles on this Ferrari. Bo still intact, Merry Christmas. 
Like my wife looks at me with a lot of pride. She looks at me like a piece of Ikea furniture that she assembled all by herself. Sure, it was difficult at times. She almost gave up in the process. But then she saw it through and she completed me. Now, would I be a little bit more stable if a couple of her friends would have helped her out along the way? Absolutely. I'm definitely missing a screw or two. People ask me all the time, they're like, Jeremiah, is it weird for you that you've only slept with your wife, but she slept with other people before you? No, I put a positive spin on everything, right? I look at my wife like a new pair of shoes that was donated to a Goodwill. <laughs> and I happen to be the lucky guy to find them that day. I'm looking at all these gross, beat up shoes and I'm like, oh, how did these get here? These are like brand new. They must have only been worn once or twice. The guy who donated them is still in the store. He's like, yeah, more than twice. <laughs> I'm like, we're gonna go twice. I like how some of these are taking a really long time for people to, <laughs> to get. It's okay. <laughs> Choose your laughs at your own pace. It's okay. <laughs> On the drive home. Oh, I get that. Okay. Nice, okay, that guy was pretty clever, actually. <laughs> cool. Yeah, man. I uh, didn't have many uh, girlfriends in high school. Uh, you said, why? I don't know, ask all the girls. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Let's go back in time real quick to every one of those. Did you, did, was that you right here that asked why? Who was it that said why? Right here? You said why? Did you, did you crush it in high school? No? Okay, so you were like upset on your own behalf too. It's like, why did it happen to you too? You're a comedian, you have confidence and stuff, you're on stage. You're, I thought you could have done it for us both. How long have you two been together? Six years. Six years? Did you have many girlfriends before this? Yeah. Yeah? Everything you say contradicts itself. <laughs> you didn't crush it in high school. You had a lot of girlfriends. Been with her six years. <laughs> You're a walking Jeopardy board, my friend. How'd you two meet? Tinder? <laughs> that guy's the most judgmental guy in here, by the way. I love that guy. He's pure joy and pure evil at the same time. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Tinder, you fools! Ah, 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 ah. I met my wife on eHarmony! Ah, 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 ah. This will be. <laughs> I'm curious about that guy now. You know what I mean? Are you here with somebody tonight, sir? Sometimes you get flat out surprised at shows. <laughs> Would you say you crushed it back in the day, sir? Yes. <laughs> Would you say you're slightly inebriated, sir? <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 
cool. Yeah, I didn't have uh, many girlfriends in high school. And in Kansas, like, like the, the metric system for that, like, if you don't have a bunch of girlfriends, your dad just thinks you're gay. <laughs> you know what I mean? My dad's like, so do you, uh, are you seeing any, uh, do you like girls? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to focus on my art right now, okay, Dad? <laughs> my dad's like, his name is Art? <laughs> you know, you get asked that question enough over the years, you start developing a little bit of a complex, like, why do they keep asking me this? You know what I mean? So, for years I've been trying to prove to my dad to my wife and to myself that I'm not gay, <laughs> right? So my wife, if she wants to have sex anytime, like I gotta be ready to go. I got something to prove, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Like she can do that thing where, you know, as you ladies do, or you do a temperature check on us. It's rare, but sometimes you ladies are in the mood before us, and you'll do like a... <sighs> <laughs> You bat it around a little bit. And we never acknowledge what you're doing, but we're just like, is she doing what we think she's doing? Like there's some invisible thing on the other side of the bed that she's grabbing for that's not there. She's like, let me just get this real quick. And then we still, you want us to think that you are still having us initiate. Like, hey, are you in the mood? You're like, wait, you want to have sex with me? I mean, I guess. Sometimes you're more blatant. You do the finger walk thing. The do 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 do. Beep boop 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 boop. Hello, rise and shine. So I can be dead tired. I can be absolutely dead tired coming straight out of a coma, right? But if my wife initiates, I'm like, oh, let's do this, I'm not gay. <laughs> I'm so not gay right now, this is awesome. <laughs> this is great. <sighs> so my wife was, she was ready to have children before me. I think a lot of times, ladies, you know your timeline ahead of us as men. You have ideas of when you want things to happen. Men try to live life like they're vampires. <laughs> like, yeah, we can have kids. Is next century good for you? Is that, okay, cool. We're living forever. Hey, I don't want to make plans anytime soon. <laughs> you ladies have an idea, you know what I mean? My wife was like dreaming about having kids before I was. Right? She would like wake up, she'd be like, oh, I just had the most beautiful dream last night. I had a dream that two fairies were descending from the heavens, and between their wings, they were holding a bassinet. And as it touched earth, I peered over and pulled back the sheet. And it was a baby. <laughs> and that baby was a perfect blend of my face and yours. And I'm like, was this a good dream or a bad dream? Because it sounds terrifying to me. Because I had a similar dream last night, but it was a toddler-sized man that was carrying a butcher knife that was following me around. Going, you're my daddy. You're my daddy forever. So we're on slightly different timelines, right? So she caught on to something that I would do when we were making love. When we were about to reach that moan of, of ecstasy together, hopefully, hopefully together. Um, <laughs> you hope, you hope. I would say, because I wasn't ready, I'd, I'd lean down and I'd go, I'm about to pull out. Because I'm a romantic. 
you have to let your lady know when you're about to do that. It's a, it's a very scary situation if you don't give some kinds of heads up. You can't just be making sweet, passionate love. Give no warning to... My lady. <laughs> Would you like one of my towels? <laughs> Bath or beach, your choice. <laughs> it's scary, you gotta let them know. You know how we always talk about how... <laughs> how women have multiple orgasms? You know? <laughs> woo! Woo! <laughs> Guys in the front, this is fake, man, it's fake. Come on, man. Why are you spreading rumors like this, Jeremiah? Little known fact, ladies, guys can have multiple orgasms too. It's how many times you see us go. <laughs> That's ours, you know what I mean? You can literally count how many times we're like. So my wife caught on to my behavior. <laughs> and I leaned down one night, she decided to start a different tactic with me because she was ready to start having kids, right? She was ready to go. So she started to bully me in the bedroom. <laughs> this is what she did. I leaned down one night and I go, I'm about to, why won't you come inside me? Are you gay? I'm like, I'm literally having sex with you right now. What more do I have to do to prove to you that I'm not gay? I'll show you who's gay. I turned her around, I put it in her butt. <laughs> who's gay now? Shout out to all the ladies who decided to not laugh at that joke. <laughs> I've been joking about everything tonight, but this is the, the one you decided to take seriously. Like, I really liked the guy until he told his forced entry story. <laughs> wow, I thought I knew him for a second. <laughs> now, we actually, we planned our, our pregnancy very well. We, we planned it in a way where... <sighs> I knew that as soon as she went off birth control, that we were gonna have a baby the first time. I knew it in my gut, I knew it in my heart, because I told you guys, I've never done a drug in my life, I've never drank in my life. This is the purest stuff you're gonna get. <laughs> and not like in a weird German way, like this is the purest it's going to be. <laughs> you know, like not like that. Like it has been untampered with. You know, this is top shelf jizz, you know what I'm saying? This is the creme de la cum, you know what I'm saying? I knew that as soon as I gave that to my wife with no kind of goalie involved, that we were gonna have a baby, right? Yeah, a goalie, yeah. Never heard that analogy of a goalie? <laughs> so, we decided this, we planned this uh, very well. I, we wanted it to be special. And I knew that, you know, uh, this was gonna happen when she came up to me one night and she goes, I'm, um, 
I'm ovulating. So, uh, can we have sex right now? <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, I'm not gay, let's do this. <laughs> so that's a lot of pressure for a man though, to literally be like, go <laughs> right now. I'm like, can I see a boob or something? <laughs> Like, I can't just be like, yeah! <laughs> can you like, can you do one of your famous swipes or something? Can you bat it around, you know, give me a little punch or something? A little flick? I need a little something to get me going. And we started making love and, uh, it was actually, it was very difficult for me to get there because I knew <laughs> that I was gonna become a father in that moment. I just knew, I knew. So it was taking me a little bit longer to the point where, <laughs> where it's just like, I mean, we can, like, we can try again another night. Like I was, <laughs> ladies, I was rock hard. Don't worry about that. I was staying like there, but I couldn't get, you know what I mean? I couldn't get there, right? And uh, I had to like clear my mind. And I was like, this is the woman who you love. You both want a baby together. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. And once I cleared my mind, it was the most I've ever come in my entire life. <laughs> Cause we had been waiting for a while to do this, and I kept not getting there, so it kept backing up in my system. <laughs> so when I say it was the biggest orgasm of my life, I'm not lying at all. Finally, when the floodgates were released, I was like, ah! ha, 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 I don't know why I said this, but as I leaned over on the bed and rolled off of her, I go, I gave you everything in my tank. <laughs> and that's the actual story of how we conceived our son, ladies and gentlemen. caught him masturbating. <laughs> you simple fool. <laughs> Believe it or not, ladies, even when we're in a relationship, even when we're in love with you, we still crank them out. It shouldn't be a big deal. It really shouldn't. I encourage my wife to explore her body. This actually happened. This actually happened. I was out late working, doing stand up. I came home very late at night, as I do. And my wife was in our bed and she had fallen asleep. And inside her hand, was a vibrator. <laughs> I could have reacted so many different ways. But I was like, wow, this beautiful angel tuckered herself out. <sighs> I love her so much. So I tucked her in. I gently took the vibrator out of her hand. I kissed the vibrator. <laughs> and I put it in the nightstand next to her. Now, I just want 
paint this hypothetical for you guys. Imagine my wife coming home late. <laughs> and she sees me in our bed. <laughs> with a flashlight in my hand. <laughs> She's turning on all the lights. She's ripping the covers off the bed. Get out, get out of the house! We're getting a divorce, you're disgusting! <laughs> you ladies wouldn't let that fly. There's something that's extra gross, and I'll admit it, I'll admit it, there's something extra gross about us putting our penis inside something rather than having something go like in, inside of you ladies. There's something extra like of the, maybe because it may, <laughs> maybe because it makes a sound or something when we do it, like a. <laughs> Where yours is like. <laughs> We're like, is it the Indy 500 already? <laughs> Is there a swarm of bees in here? <laughs> we all know that you masturbate prettier than us, you know? You, you would never let us, you know, catch you masturbating though. It happens. Women will catch men masturbating because we're stupid, you know what I mean? But ladies, you're smart. You, you, you have precautions, you know, almost like Home Alone booby traps set up around the house, just in case we're, you know? Because we, we ruin the moment. Like, if we caught you, we would, like, be, like, in the doorway for a while, be like... You need a hand or something? Do you need an extra, I got, I got two hands if you, or I, I, got a, I got a real one of those if you, if, if you want. You catch us masturbating though, you know? It's always the same guilty look. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Why are you still jerking off? Just stop. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, you, you're looking at me while you're jerking off. I have to finish, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Guy who crushed it in high school. You still crushing it to this day? I don't know why he turned into one of the swamp people all of a sudden. <laughs> Okay. On occasion, I still get wet some damn thing. I never do any man in the outdoor thing. Someday you do better than others, someday you don't. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you out with all the fellas, sometimes you out with all the ladies, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. On occasion, you get all damn thing. Been a minute, but you know, when life thing want a minute on a good time, you know. Okay. You sound like a guy who fingers his own belly button. Don't get you know no name. Yeah, I crush it, I crush it. I love it when guys say that and they crush it. Oh yeah, I crushed it. 
Yeah, I destroyed her. I beat it up, dude. I killed her. I killed her last night. She's dead, dude. I murdered a woman last night. Your boy. <laughs> what happened to nice music? You know what I mean? Music that just had good, fun, clean lyrics. You know, they don't make music like that anymore. Like, you just turn on the radio and you just hear something like this. Like, I'm looking at my girl's beautiful face. But when I'm with her, magic takes place. This girl is the light of my life. I think I might make her my wife. Doesn't that just make you feel good on the inside? Right? And I respect women. There's nothing degrading the women in those lyrics. Unfortunately, music has gone a little bit downhill over the years. You turn on the radio nowadays, you hear something like this. <laughs> You know I'm looking for a slut, 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 slut. I wanna put it in that butt, 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 butt. Spread those butt cheeks wide, 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 wide. So I can blow a load inside, side, 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 side. What happened to music in the last 50 years? How do we go from like the nicest sound of music like, I'm gonna buy her a wedding ring. I'm gonna get her in a gangbang. I'll propose underneath a waterfall. I need two girls, one for each paw. I like hoes. What happened to music? I feel like I could change, change the game with rap, you know what I mean? But my story, I've only had sex with one woman, right? It could breed a new genre of rap music. Loyal rap music? That's unheard of. You don't, you, you know, you're, all rappers are always claiming how many girls they got with, you know? They're always flaunting about it. But I'll come out and be like, ha, 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 yeah. Where my loyal men be at? <laughs> Fellas, you better be clapping or your ladies will be angry with you later. <laughs> don't need no other girls, cause my wife's my whole world. So don't you even dare to compare to her. One girl for life, every day, every night. She's my blue sky and I'm a kite. She can do no wrong, only right. Loving her too much, my only plight. That's one kitty for eternity. She took my virginity. The only woman that I see in this holy matrimony. Cause I'm loyal to the soil. Cause every king needs a queen. And that's how you become royal. <laughs> Black guy, how was that? <laughs> you give me a pass? I give. So you give me a pass for a day? You'll give me a pass in grade. Okay, that was different than what I heard. hurt my soul when he said that. Do you rap at all? No. You're like, no, I'm just, I have good taste in music. <laughs> I get it, I get it. How long have you two been together? A couple months. Couple months? Nice. How'd you two meet? Gaming. Gaming? That's a unique one. On like Twitch and stuff like that? Or was it just like through like Call of Duty or? What was it? Destiny 2? And you're just doing online chat? And then you're like, let's meet in person. Wow. Cool. Oh, and the smooch. <laughs> Not virtual, in real life. <laughs> did you ever talk dirty during Destiny 2 or did you wait to meet up? Like, I'm gonna take that avatar ass and I'm gonna <laughs> spin it in a circle, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Confidential, confidential. <laughs> How long were you gaming before you decided to meet up in person? Five years. Five years? <laughs> That's a loyal gamer right there. <laughs> you should have really identified with my song. Gamers don't go outside. How can they cheat? Gamers don't go outside. How can they cheat? Wow. Uh, you just opened the door for like all the women in here. And like, well, guess who's getting a PS5 this Christmas? <laughs> You did a great thing today. You did a great thing today. <laughs> you gotta, you ladies might have to rewire your brain. It's like, oh, my husband, he's on the, the games all the time. Wait a second. I trapped him exactly like I wanted to. <laughs> this is perfect. My wife and I are big fans of Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Spoiler, there's some more music coming at you. <laughs> and we'll see if this student can get more than a passing grade. <laughs> I like Justin Timberlake because I feel like that guy can make anything sexy or at least he thinks he can make anything sexy. Right? He's got that much confidence and swagger about him. He's got a, a three-step process in all of his songs to make women fall in love with him. Right? First, he talks to the ladies when the beat drops. He's like, what's up, girl? How you doing? This is JT, who else? The second thing he does, he beatboxes, and the third thing he does, he goes in that high-pitched man voice. With that three-step process, it's a foolproof plan, ladies. You can't help yourselves. Like, he could be doing a jingle for a commercial like IHOP. He still find a way to make that thing sexy. You come out all super confident, right? Beatbox. I said a one, two, three, four, a five, six, seven, eight. I want the bacon, eggs, and the cheese right there on my plate. Hey. There's more. Do you like it well done? Because I do well. The eggs are well seasoned, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Falsetto. Move on to a good boy, buy one, get one free. Be major, save her. They call me cool, do like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What did I do? How did I do? 10 out of 10, that's what he said, people. I love you guys. I'm Jeremiah Watkins. Thank you so much.